being directed by Clint Eastwood? Is this like it happens you, all the time? I it mean, happened, I'm kidding. You uh, you mentioned like you know that's one of those things you can't dream about when you're moving out here. So is it like it's just silly when you even get let's say I mean how many auditions to uh, to get in front of them? Was it like an initial thing where you were like also second question when you saw it were you like I fucking got this? Um, no, it was, uh, I was in Thailand doing, um, the five bloods for Spike Lee at Netflix. Yeah. And at the time I was, um, I was sober too. And I was alone. Uh, I didn't have the money or the brain to have like a friend or assistant there, which I should have done. Lonely in Thailand oh, by yourself? Oh, so lonely. And I was so, I'm not well traveled. So it was like, there was a big fear of, you know, just, just being in that environment for me. Um, and what, what made it kind of compounded was just like. I'm not drinking. I'm not socializing as much. I have a ton of time off because I'm just a supporting character and I don't have any company. And every time I walk outside, there's like 17 prostitutes trying to give me a massage. And I'm like, this is not good for me. So is it I, really? I got to the point where I just barricaded myself in my hotel and didn't go anywhere after like the second or third week of seven weeks. So I got offered a lot of money to do the Richard Jewell miniseries for, for charter broadcasting. Cool. My buddy Cameron Britton from Manhunter ended up doing it and, and rocked it. Great actor. But three days after I got offered the TV Richard Jewell thing, they said Clint wants you to star in his new movie, and I'm like, that doesn't sound like a real thing. I go, what is the project? Is that an go, email or a phone call? Phone call for sure. Yeah, you can't email it. <laughs> uh, and and uh, I've deleted. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, and so I, I said, what is the movie? And they said, the Richard Jewell movie. And I was like, are you telling me I got offered the same character in opposing competing projects within 72 hours? They're like, yep. One is a huge money offer. The other is just verbal from Clint's producer and casting director. And they go at the exact same time this summer. One's in Pips Pittsburgh. One is in Atlanta. And... The movie's at Fox. Disney bought Fox, and Clint only works at Warner Brothers, so he's currently in a fight to get the movie at Warner Brothers. So I'm like, guys, this is not breeding trust. Like, I'm really worried that I'm going to say yes to Clint, it's and then it, and then it doesn't happen, oh, and I turn down a ton man. of money. So I think like half a week, like four days or so go by, and they're like, we need an answer from Paul. Is he going to do the show or not? And I had only had a cast, uh, the casting director, Jeff Micklack, call me. And, uh, and his producer, this other dude. And I, I was like, okay, well, I got to make a decision. So I said, the Bible talks about fear and love. You can only operate out of one or the other, not both. And fear would tell me to take the money. Love would tell me to work with Clint Eastwood, tell him I'm going to work with Clint Eastwood. <sighs> and I hung up the phone, and I was terrified. It's of course. 4.30 in the morning. I'm by myself in Thailand, and I'm like, did I make the right choice? I, yeah, and I just You go get a for, massage just to, like, talk your thoughts out? <laughs> That's what that's what he told TMZ. I um I need somebody to talk to. I was lonely. You know the only time I've been on TMZ <laughs> is dancing with Margot Robbie at a bar in Atlanta. Awesome. Somebody had cell phone footage of us drunk like pirouetting and acting like ballerinas being silly. If you look up TMZ Paul Hauser Margot Robbie you'll find it. Amazing. But it's like I never want to be on TMZ again. I've already peaked. It, it, oh yeah. It's not going to get You're not cooler. Topping than that. that. Unless Terrible. you and like Chet Hanks get like frozen yogurt. You ain't topping that. I feel like Chet and I would come to... That's one of those guys I feel like I might come to blows. Yeah. He'd be like, it's a white boy summer. And I'd be like, well, it's an angry black man's winner. And for all of them, I'd like to punch you in the face. What you the guy watching fuck my butt on that Delta 422 flight? <laughs> I'm still laughing at how fun that was. Uh, hey, guys. Adam Ray here for the About Last Night podcast. Hope you enjoyed that little ALN highlight, that little freebie tidbit. If you want to see more highlights, clips, animations, and episodes, click right there. huh? Click right there and get all the free ALN goodies your heart can muster. And, of course, subscribe to the show by clicking the ALN logo right there. huh? Do that. It's easy. I'll see you next time. Peace.